Super easy to spot the hits too. So I'm, I'm like right on top target, even after the shot. No more bullets. Howdy folks, it's Adrian, the hunting gear guy, and this is the Kadex CDX R7 Sheepdog. It's a PRS rifle, <laughs> so that's something I would usually review, but uh, I, I shot a little bit of a little bit of PRS this year, and Kadex reached out and they're like, yo, you want to try out our Sheepdog rifle? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> and by the way, it's hunting season, so I might take it hunting. So uh, I did uh, end up taking it out hunting, and uh, it was kind of an interesting rifle to uh, hunt with. But uh, before we get too far, let's just make sure we're unloaded here. So magazines empty, and chambers empty as well. So why don't we get this started? So what's this rifle uh, really great for? Well, I think this rifle would be great for PRS. Uh, PRS is a Precision Rifle Series. It's a series of... Uh, uh, competitions that people do with uh, with precision rifles. Uh, you're typically round limited. You typically have to shoot from a lot of different positions, and uh, a nice heavy rifle that's that's really adaptable to the situations is perfect for that kind of thing. Uh, and that's really where I think something like this would be perfect for. Uh, this is the short action one, so this one's got a nice short action to it, and it uses the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, but they've got a pile of other options. They've got uh, some that will do long action, some that will do uh, calibers other than 6.5 as well. Uh, but this is really good for PRS, and uh, I want to show you a couple reasons why. The first reason is uh, is the weight. The weight's actually uh, uh, good for, <laughs> for PRS. You don't want too light of a, a rifle because light rifles will move around a little bit more. And uh, a heavy rifle with uh, a nice break on it and something like 6.5 Creedmoor are actually very easy to spot your hits at range. So you can fire this uh, this rifle and uh, and still see the bullet uh, uh, hit the target. Whereas if you're to do that with a high caliber lightweight rifle your uh, scope's going to be off target by, by the time that bullet hits, so, uh, so you won't be able to see what's happening. So number one, the weight is uh, is one thing that you want. And another thing you'd want in a PRS rifle is uh, adjustability. So this uh, this butt pad will adjust up and down just uh, just through those two screws in the back. Uh, you can also throw spacers uh, in there, just like you can with a lot of other modular rifles these days to, to change the length of pull. And uh, we've got a couple of other different butt pad options on there, so you can really fit the stock to yourself. The other one, and this one's kind of cool, is the uh, the adjustable cheek weld here. This cheek piece is spring loaded, and you might want to think think of that as a uh, as why, but then it immediately becomes apparent because all you need to do to to adjust your cheek uh, riser is get yourself kind of comfortable on there. I like to rise it up just a little bit more, tighten it down, and then put my full weight on there, and see if I'm still seeing straight through the scope. So this is a very easy way to adjust that cheek weld and then tighten it in. So very nice there. Now coming in from there, we've got a grip here. Uh, these use these little grip panels on here. This is like a, a real grippy kind of a kind of a rubber texture. Uh, you can either put your thumb on the side or around whichever really one you want to. Uh, we've got a, a safety kind of like a Remington 700 style uh, at the rear here. So there's your safe and there's off safe. There's a caulking indicator at the rear there that's red when it's caulked and when it's struck out. There's a two-stage trigger. And there you can see the caulking indicator is gone as well. Now, just while I'm in this action area here, the bolt itself has four lugs on it and it uses them to give you a slightly shorter uh, throw on the bolt. So even though the bolt is sticking out uh, quite easily there, really easy to grab onto, uh, it's not actually going to get close to the scope at all uh, when it's uh, when it's fully unlocked there. So you can see that there's lots of room and it's a very quick bolt to throw. So uh, lots of room on that uh, on that bolt. Now, just so I can show you that bolt, I'm just going to take it out. And the way you take it out is uh, we've actually got a button right over here. So we just push that bolt release button and out the bolt comes. Now this is something that uh, you might notice in some other rifles. Uh, you can actually fit the bolt in even with the, oh, let me pull it up here, 
even with the uh, uh, the cheek riser up. So, uh, so that's nice to see. <laughs> now here's that bolt. You can see it's got some nice flutes in there. And there you can see it's got that four lug design. So, uh, so it's got a little bit of a shorter uh, throw on it. So I mentioned that two stage trigger just to show you what that, <laughs> it's not really a two stage, like it's got a little bit of uh, take up, but it's like there's there's no weight there at all. So it's just a very slight touch just to get it to uh, to hit the sear. And then after that, you've got, again, this is adjustable. So you see the slot on the bottom of the uh, trigger guard here. That's where you can get access to the trigger to uh, to make adjustments to it. So if you want it lighter or a little bit heavier, I guess you could do that. So it'll go from one and a half to two and a half pounds. Now the chassis itself uses an aluminum skeleton. There's an aluminum skeleton that starts uh, somewhere around here and ends somewhere over here. That holds the receiver, holds the recoil, like all the important bits for uh, for precision while the rest of this thing can be uh, plastic and not so heavy and not so cold as well. I've, keep in mind, I was shooting this thing uh, in minus 20 Celsius, which is zero, below zero maybe Fahrenheit. Uh, so pretty cold and uh, shooting off plastic's nice. It's got a nice uh, foam uh, uh, cheek piece here as well. Uh, one other thing I, I just almost forgot to mention here, this cheek piece here will uh, can adjust. So if you loosen these Allen bolts here, you can actually adjust it a little bit to uh, one side or the other. Now the rail, you can get in zero, 20 or 30 MOA. It's actually, it's not just a rail. It's, it's also got these little like circle pucks that kind of fit in with the receiver just to uh, act as integrated recoil lugs on there. So uh, this base is really on there. And along the bottom here, we've got some room for slots or we can put Picatinny rails so we can throw a bipod or something like that on there. Uh, I'll come to this in just a minute. Finally, we've got a pretty heavy fluted barrel and then we've got a suppressor ready uh, muzzle brake on the end here that's uh, pretty effective. <laughs> I found it was pretty effective. Uh, this rifle doesn't really move a whole heck of a lot when you're shooting it. If you've got the bipod loaded up like at all, uh, you're sp spotting your shots at uh, at long range. Now, I want to talk about some of the options that you would find on this rifle. One of them is a bag rider right on the back here. Uh, so you could pop a bag or, uh, back there. It would sit really nicely on it. Uh, another one is the uh, the rings or the uh, scope mount on there is Kdex's as well, which would be an option. Uh, we've got a night vision uh, rail on the front here that we've also got a QD mount on at the front as well. Um, at first, I, I saw this on this side. I'm like, oh man, I don't want it on that side because I'm going to have this bolt and I'm going to have all this other crap that's going to be jabbing me in the back when I used it. But I tried it with a QD, uh, QD sling. So there's a QD mount back there. There's one up here. And it was actually all right. So it was all right running this stuff all on my back. It was actually, I don't know, f through luck or, <laughs> or how it was sitting on me, but uh, it wasn't jabbing me with anything, which was uh, kind of nice because like, you need to sling this thing when you're, when you're tromping around the woods or, uh, or heading out to your, uh, your favorite long range hunting spot, uh, which I was doing. Uh, so that was kind of nice. Uh, this rail on the front here, this is if you were running some uh, night vision or if you just wanted uh, a little bit of extra protection for the barrel or if you wanted uh, extra accessory spots to put stuff on and that kind of thing. Now, another option you can get is, uh, is a really nice drag bag that you can, uh, you can take out with this rifle. Uh, it's got some uh, decent number of pockets on the outside and on the inside. Uh, nice big zippers on this thing. I've been using this thing to haul around this, <laughs> this rifle the whole time and uh, it's been really nice. It's got a little bit of padding on there and uh, uh, some straps to hold it in and, and whatnot as well. So, uh, so a really nice bag. Now, one of the other things that Kadex did that, uh, that I really liked was they actually sent a couple different bipods here. So this is their Falcon Light and their Falcon regular Falcon, Falcon bipod. And, uh, and they're pretty neat and uh, they're really high quality bipods. So this one uh, uh, mounts to your Picatinny rail or, or whatever. Uh, it's got nicer uh, big buttons on it. So this is like a big beefy kind of, uh, kind of use on it. Uh, we've also got these buttons here, which lets you pull the legs out. And of course you can tilt that just a little bit forward or a little bit back if you want your rifle to sit closer to the ground. I was actually shooting from a, from a blind where I had like a shooting table. Uh, so for this bipod, I preferred to shoot it kind of like that because that gave me a little bit of a lower uh, profile to it. Uh, but again, if I wanted longer, I could go like that or I could pull it to the, uh, to the 90 degree and uh, just get a little bit more. I found this bipod uh, the action on it was, uh, uh, was really easy and quick to, uh, to use. Now this Falcon has a adjustable tilt. So you just 
pull that guy there and that gives you the ability to really move the legs to uh, where it would be level with the rifle and then torque it down so uh, it's a nice quick action on there this one doesn't have the QD uh, option on it at least not this one that I have in front of me the, the light one uses uh, somewhat more fine buttons to uh, to deploy the bipod so it's just using that button right there and that's the one that you're pushing to adjust out and then it fits in with those little uh, half circles in, in there so that's what you're using to set the leg angle to pull the legs out we've got a similar button situation as the falcon where you push that button you pull it out you can see we've got a whole ton of different uh, grooves there so very adjustable into uh, where you set that we've one. also got that tilt uh, adjustment where we can tilt this thing side to side What's different on the light is that the light also has a cam. Now this one was handy for, again, hunting from that blind because I could track deer. Is this gonna do it for me? I might need to put this on a rifle. Oh, there we go. Uh, it cams side to side. So you can have the bipod legs steady and still move the rifle uh, while the bipod legs are steady. And just to show you the rail length that's necessary, you can see the light just has like a, a little bit of rail that it grabs. It's got a little bit of a key in the front there that uh, grabs onto that pick rail. Uh, whereas this guy here grabs onto a bigger section and it's got a key right there as well. Now, while I preferred the quick action and the bigger buttons on the, uh, on the Falcon regular, uh, the Falcon Light is probably what I would use for hunting just because it's so lightweight and again because it's got that uh, panning action on it that uh, that I really need for hunting. Now both bipods also let you change out the feet. Uh, you just push this little button here and you can unscrew the feet and put on other feet if you wanted to. Now the rifle uses AICS sta like standard mags that you'd use with a lot of other stuff. Um, since they are standard, I think this is something that you'd find out other mags that with 6.5 Creedmoor, what I found is that they sit really far back in there and putting another one in is kind of a pain in the butt because, because they're so far in, you got to get above that shoulder there. So you kind of have to push down with your finger and, uh, and stick your other rounds in between to uh, get them in there. You can't just push them with each round and, uh, and snap them in there. But the mags themselves are very easy to use and just slap it in there and you're good to go. Running the bolt on it, Super easy, super nice uh, bolt to use, very quick because of that short throw. Now to show the QD mount on the, uh, on the light, you just pop it on there and then torque on your lever and then that's it. This thing's uh, ready to rock and roll. So very quick bipod to throw on and uh, just have handy on your rifle. Now what did I like and dislike about this rifle? Um, loved shooting it, like taking this to the, to the range and shooting it. I had my, uh, my 12 year old out shooting this thing and, uh, no problem. He loved it actually. And it's because uh, shooting with a really nice scope on this rifle, nice bipod, laying down prone. Oh, it's so natural. It's such a nice heavy rifle. There's no recoil and shooting long range targets is just way, like way too easy. So a uh, very nice rifle to, uh, to shoot it at uh, medium to long to uh, very long range. And, uh, um, because of the adjustability in it, this would be really nice for PRS as well. So should you buy a sheepdog? Well, I mean, it, it really depends on whether you're going to shoot PRS. And if you're going to shoot PRS, do you want to play around with like adding a chassis to another rifle and betting it and doing all the custom action stuff, or you just want something like right out of the box that's ready to play the game? Um, this is ready to play the, <laughs> the PRS game. Or, or if you uh, like to hunt uh, long range, then uh, this is really well set up for that as well. Or if you like to just nail targets at, uh, at long range, head out into the mountains and uh, set up some steel plates at, uh, at some ridiculous distances and uh, try your hand at shooting them with a, a variety of different positions. This is really the ticket. Really nice uh, uh, semi-custom rifle that's got a bunch of uh, really cool options out of the box and uh, is ready to play. Thanks for watching. I'm not going to shoot that thing. I think I'll just watch. you got to get on it. It doesn't kick hardly at all. As long as you put it on What's that? Are you going to put it on your channel? Sure. Oh boy. Get behind it, get comfortable. Oh boy. Finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. This hand goes underneath. Yeah, you gotta lift 
lift that part up. And I would go for the 200. until you're ready. Make sure the butt is right up against your shoulder. Yep. Too bad, <laughs> Oh, we're empty. 